Cops and Demons, Episode 1, A Dance to Remember. Testing. Testing. One, two, three. Okay, that sounds good. Today is October 14th, 2019, and I have been commissioned to document how the end of the world began. A little bit of personal opinion here. I am an expert on the subject, after all. One would think that the end of the world would start with a politician ordering the launch of a new magical warhead, or the witches and wizards finally getting fed up with the cultist normies trying to hunt them down and burn them at the stake. Those are all perfectly reasonable excuses to try to destroy the world as we know it. But in this case, the end of the world started in a tiny rural town called Healdsburg. It's nestled right next to a mountain range covered in pine trees and cliffs. Even now, it's not a particularly unusual town. The mayor is a good one who doesn't take bribes. The salamander and cat populations are properly monitored so that they don't stray into the wrong places and cause trouble. And although there are those who smuggle in animal transformers from the city, usually the eight good cops of the Healdsburg City Police Department are quick to catch them. Which brings me to the source of the destruction of our world as we know it, Dmitry Dostoyevsky, the newest law enforcement officer of the HCPD a former gymnast, and the oldest of 11 children. Quite a number. Ironically, the day that would eventually lead to the terror and enslavement of our race started with Dimitri teaching her teenage sister how to swing dance for the upcoming prom. Two steps forward and spin. Dimitri grabbed her sister Molly's hand and spun her around, taking a step back. Whoa, whoa! Molly twirled, lost grip of Dimitri's hand, and ran into the wall. <laughs> Molly turned around to give her sister a glare. Dee, I wasn't ready! Molly swayed as she got up, still dizzy. Dimitri grinned at her younger sister and gave her a wink. Oh, come on. I was improvising, Molly. You have to get into the rhythm and move. That's why when someone leads, you gotta learn to follow. She put her hands on her hips, careful to avoid the butt of her handgun. She turned to the side, glancing at their three younger siblings, the triplets. Don't you guys think so? Rosa gave Dimitri a wide-eyed look and buried her face further into her favorite blankie. Masha tilted her head, light brown, curly hair swaying. Although Halloween was still two weeks away, she was in a bright pink princess dress, complete with poofy shoulders, lace at the ends, and a pointed hat with a cascade of lace on the top of her head a properly traditional attire unless there are any dragons hanging around, in which case it is provident to have a tower in the town so that any errant princesses are not carried too far away. In any case, Masha sat daintily on the floor, her legs tucked under herself, back straight, head tilted ever so demurely to the right, once again like a proper princess. Honestly though, this historian's guess is that she'd probably seen the girls on ponies and princesses acting like that. It made her older sister fight a smile. Dimitri had enjoyed making the dress for her sister, as some older sisters enjoy doting on their younger siblings. This was not the only reason, though, as she had an unusual proclivity to doing crafts. In other words, unlike many female law enforcement officers, she was very much a girly girl. Masha's eyes went to Molly. It's okay, Molly. Dee can teach you to dance. She's not batty. For some reason, this didn't seem to encourage Molly. The older girl's lips went down in a frown. Then she gave the little princess a deadpan expression. Nikolai nodded energetically next to Masha getting up. He took a deep breath, puffing out his chest. I think that Molly just needs to practice spinning. With that, he raised his hands above his head and started to twirl on his tiptoes, his nose in the air and his golden hair bouncing around his head as he moved. Like this, Mol. <laughs> oh, good skies above. I love little kids. I almost don't want to go to work. This is so precious. Molly glared at Dimitri and sighed at Nikolai. Her scowl only lasted oh so long, however, because a moment later she was groaning dismally, her shoulders falling. She folded her arms. Might as well not go to the prom. I'll just make a fool of myself. Dimitri leaned over, wrapped her arm around the shorter girl, and squeezed her tight. Look, Molls, you have a great date. You're really excited. 
You don't gotta have it down pat, just have fun. That's the point of dancing anyways. She kissed the top of her younger sister's head. Molly patted for a moment, but then reached out and put an arm around Dimitri's waist. Her head thunked against Dimitri's shoulder. They watched the little ones for a moment. Nikolai had taken it upon himself to entertain the other two now. He was dancing everything from the robot to something that vaguely resembled ballet. <laughs> more, Nick, more! A shy smile peeked out from the edge of Rose's blanket. I'm just worried about making a fool of myself. Molly's fingers tightened a little around Dimitri's waist. He's really popular. I don't really know him that well. What if I do something weird? And I always get so flustered when he's around. Her face reddened a little. Aww, you're worried about your crush liking you. So cute. Molly's expression went back to a scowl. <laughs> Dimitri rubbed her sister's shoulder. Tell you what, after I get back tonight, you and I can practice more. You may not be a dancing queen, but I'll make sure you don't step on any toes, okay? The girl looked up at her. Okay, Dee. But you know I have to go to bed at night for school, right? <laughs> oh, come on. My shift ends at 7. I'll get back in time. Don't you worry your little head. Molly gave her a skeptical expression, which immediately made Dimitri lean down and pinch her cheeks on both sides. Mmm! Molly squirmed away, retreating. <laughs> Dimitri pulled out her coat before heading out the door. The October day was cold, sending a biting chill through her that made her pull her jacket closer to her body and walk faster. Even so, she was in a good mood. Finally, things were peaceful. For the last month, they'd gone through the migration season. It had been complete chaos, with thousands of salamanders passing through on their way into the mountains. Dimitri shuddered. She never wanted to pick up another little squirming body. Not that she wanted to in the first place. She had the Healdsburg City Police Department jacket on. It had a small tree logo on the upper right corner. She also wore a pair of sturdy blue uniform pants. Then she'd given it her own flair. Around her neck, she had wound a pink ribbon tied in a little knot around her throat. Her boots had a flower pattern on them that she knew drove some up the wall. Last of all, her hair was tied up in a high ponytail that she curled just a bit, and she put on a hint of blush and mascara. She turned the street corner and caught sight of old Mrs. Jenkins watering her lawn with a hose. She grinned, bouncing as she took hop skips down the sidewalk. Hi, Mrs. Jenkins. How are your flowers? The old woman looked up slowly, her large pansy print dress blowing over her boots a little in the cold wind. All gone, I'm afraid, dear. Winter's going to come hot and cold this year. Best that you bundle up more from now on. The old woman frowned sourly at her garden. Dimitri nodded, tipping her hat. Thanks, Mrs. Jenkins. I'll tell everyone at the precinct. She gave the old woman a wink. It was best to heed the advice. After all, Mrs. Jenkins was an old spinster who lived alone, and old spinsters were always right about their intuitions. If the weatherman said it was going to rain, you probably should bring a jacket or umbrella with you. But if Miss Jenkins said it was going to rain, then you brought one or accepted the fact that you were going to end up wet. You're welcome, dear. The old woman turned back to her garden, lifting the hose higher. Dimitri continued down the street, greeting the local bum, Ed, who was pushing his cart up the street from the little convenience store. Miss Jenkins said bundle up, Ed. She waved as she trotted by. The bearded, gray-haired man looked up slowly as she ran by, raising a hand. He didn't answer. He didn't usually. But that was okay. When she'd first started saying hello to Ed, all he would do was scowl at her. But she made sure to give him a big smile every time since, and he started softening up. It wasn't like he was grinning back at her now, but at least he looked up and waved sometimes. After turning the corner, she went three more blocks, passing the barber shop, a tiny clothes store, and the local bar before arriving at the police station. She paused in front of the place, adjusting her bow, yanking up her belt more securely, and slapping a bright grin on her face before walking in the front door. The place was dead quiet. For a moment, she thought it was empty. Then she saw her partner, Chatsy, sitting behind the dispatcher's desk and scowling at the phone as if daring it to ring. Hey, girl. Dimitri lifted a hand in greeting as she slid inside. Where is everyone? 
The black haired girl's head snapped up and Dimitri jumped as her almond eyes glared. Where the hell is your compact? Chatsy got up from the desk and rushed towards her. Dimitri blinked and patted down her jacket. She thought she'd left the compact in her jacket pockets. Her search came up in vain. No time. Chatsy grabbed her arm, towing her out the door and towards what looked like the last remaining cop car. The other one was missing. Hey, what's going on? Chatsy slid into the driver's seat while Dimitri went to the other side. Dimitri turned to look at Chatsy. Dimitri's partner still wasn't answering. Finally, the older woman took pity on her. Been a kidnapping. Earlier this morning, a group of college students passing through town to the coast. Stayed in town overnight. Girl went for a walk. Her friend decided to go with her at the last second and ran in to catch up. She was just in time to witness it happen. Dimitri blinked, sitting up straighter. And? Nita was in at the time. She and George followed up on the lead real quick. They got lucky. <laughs> she shook her head. They found the lead. They got enough proof to warrant a raid and call everyone in. She gave Dimitri an accusatory look. The young cop sunk lower into her seat. The rest of the drive went by in intense silence. Dimitri checked her pockets again, searching for her compact. A fear went through her as she searched. You see, mirrors are heavily regulated because of their high magical potency. They are the easiest way to communicate, but you can do so much more. Break one and endure seven years of luck that will strip you to the bone. Demons can watch you through mirrors in the darkness. Place two mirrors across from each other and open a door to hell itself. The dead can possess the living through a mirror. The possibilities are endless. And Dimitri didn't know where hers was. The cop car took a turn down a wooded street. Half of Healdsburg is in the woods. It's made up of clusters of small houses in small neighborhoods connected by little cobblestone pathways. Embedded into the doorframe of each is a horseshoe. Steel also lines the cobblestone road. Chatsy quickly drove past all of the turnoffs, keeping on the main road. She then turned onto a dirt pathway. Quietly, almost too silently, they parked at the head of the trail next to the other two cars. Chatsy opened her door and got out. Dimitri started to slide out as well, but then the thought hit her. Had she left her compact in the glove box yesterday? She pulled it open and looked inside. The usual things were in the compartment, tissues, the police handbook, an emergency reference for natural disasters. But then something on the left side caught her eye. It was a photo. She picked it up with a frown. It was an ultrasound. What was an ultrasound doing in here? She glanced at the bottom. A date from a few days ago and a name were stamped there. Chatsy Miller. Wait, Chatsy was pregnant? See, get out here. Anita's voice came from outside the car and Dimitri looked up to see a lot of expectant faces from the other cops. And a few annoyed ones. She shoved the picture back into the glove compartment and closed it, hopping out of the car. Officer D, reporting for duty. Dimitri closed the door behind her, hand up in a salute. Sam, the sheriff, rolled his eyes at her. Got as much attention span as a puppy. He turned back to the rest of the officers. An embarrassed blush rose on Dimitri's face. Beside her, Chatsy glanced over, a frown on hers. That just made Dimitri look away in more humiliation. She would do better next time, she promised herself. She bounced on the pads of her feet. Now, she just had to pay attention to what the sheriff was saying. Thanks to the good work, George and his partner, we have some important information on these no-good people thieves. These child stealers popped up in a couple other states and disappeared just as quick. They're called Baba Yaga's henchmen after the fairy tale, and they sell it to the dark witches. Child stealers? An icy feeling ran through Dimitri's body and into her fingers. He's got a pattern of taking a big group before moving, so be prepared for a lot of hostages. George says they're in a warehouse up this trail. That leaves them two escapes. Down this trail and back into the woods. She thought about the triplets. Molly, Sophia, Ivan. All of her younger brothers and sisters, but Anton and Alex would be considered targets by these sicko standards. She looped her thumb through her belt. They were going to catch these cowards. She blinked. Wait, what? Sam stopped. <sighs> 
You're on the back trail. Get it? Use your pretty girl moves to distract them and then shoot them in the foot if you have to. Dimitri's smile twitched, but she kept it on her face. It's called gymnastics. But no one was listening. Sam, George, and the three other male officers were trotting up the trail. Anita had that calculating look in her eyes for a moment before she started to follow. When she passed Dimitri, she laid a hand on her shoulder. Don't mind him, kid. He just doesn't have very big vocabulary. He wouldn't have put you on one of those trails if he didn't think you could handle yourself. She winked and then hurried to catch up with the group. That left Dimitri with Chatsy. She glanced at her partner, whose arms were folded. She was pregnant? The woman was a human tank, all muscle and hard edges. Even her eyes were sharp. She was in her mid-forties, but she was married. Was Chatsy a little more round than she had remembered? Get moving, kid. Chatsy didn't turn as she said it. Listen to your compact this time. Be ready for the raid. Compact. Raid. Yes. Shouldn't she mention... No. She'd set up her position on the other trail and just be ready for anything. Dimitri turned and ran up the trail. She knew it. Everyone who lived in town knew it. Well, everyone who lived in town knew all the little safe spots to hang out in the woods. Because you sure as a wishing star didn't want to end up in the unsafe spots to hang out in the woods. She caught sight of Sam's group. Anita was talking to George, a frown on her face. Sam was yanking on his two revolvers, whipping them around and clipping them back into his holsters as he waited. Henry, Tom, and Kyle glanced her way as she reached them. Kyle smirked at her, adjusting his room gloves. Damn, girl, you sure look smokin'. A wisp of smoke drifted from it. Dimitri wrinkled her nose. Pepper gas. He should be more careful. She carefully ignored him as she passed. A slap to her backside made her gasp and jump forward, whirling furiously. (laughs) (laughs) Come on, you know you were asking for it. If you wanted a real man so badly, you could have just asked instead of joining the force. He winked. I would have taken care of you. Her face was burning hot. I... you... I'm not! She struggled between fury and humiliation as she tried to find something to say. Dimitri whirled and ran up the trail, the heat in her face increasing. It wasn't like it was new. It wasn't like it was even original. The academy had been a lot worse in some ways, but this was so much more personal. These were guys she'd grown up with. Dimitri snuck by the warehouse and onto the other trail, as silent as a stair. It was an old building with two roofs, one on the top and one just below the upper windows. She'd become a cop because she wanted to protect people. She wasn't supposed to be afraid. That's what made her mad. Happy. (sighs) Happy. By the time she reached the other trail, she had been able to calm her nerves again, thankfully. The walkway was wider than the other trail. This one led to the highway, after all. It could only fit one vehicle, though, and there was a stone wall that had been built on either side of the road. To keep out demons. Dimitri shivered as she glanced at the walls. She hoisted herself on top of one. If people tried to escape from the warehouse, ambushing them from above would be the best move for her. She was pretty comfortable jumping down from high places, and her pretty girl moves were more effective that way. She quickly forced the scow away and crouched just behind the branch of a tree hanging out from the forest. She glanced back at the darkness. White lights twinkled a few feet inside. Only will-o'-wisps. She wiped her hands on her pants. She was fine. She turned back to the road. Now, all she had to do was wait.